Welcome to another episode of the Creator Economy Podcast Show. If you want to know how you can become a full time content creator in 2023 and beyond, if you're a business owner, if you're a brand, if you're a professional looking to build your online presence, build your thought leadership, this is the ultimate show for you. I'm going to share with you everything I do as a full time content creator. And I promise you, if you stick around, you're going to get some different, unique, and new methodologies to do just that. So stick around. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. It's good to see you. SNES Nation is in full effect right now because I don't know what's going on. We brought out the tree last night. It is December Fourth, as of this live recording, podcast listeners, replay viewers, I'm so excited to see you guys. But I've got the Snifflies. I'm live on Instagram too. I haven't gone live on Instagram since 1807. It's been that long. So I'm really excited about that too. Come on in. This show, How I Make Money Online as a full time content creator with my multiple streams of revenue without having millions and millions of subscribers and followers, I've got millions of views. But And I've got multiple channels and multiple brands, but I think if you're interested in finally growing, finally making a sustainable living in 2023 and beyond, this is going to be the ultimate. Think of this like a free masterclass. This is an absolute master course, and I'm going to share with you. We're going to start right off the bat. Make sure if you're coming on in, you tap that thumbs up. I know what you're thinking about the thumbnail and podcast listeners, replay viewers, you might be like, what do you mean by the thumbnail? I'm going to tell you the thumbnail that I you know, created for this show says, forget about your audience, do this instead. Let's start with some value right off the bat. What do I mean by that? Oh, before I get into this, make sure you stick around because get your questions ready. If you have any questions at all, I'm going to answer them. Somebody who's been a full-time content creator for eight plus years, who's been in the online ecosystem for decades, I'm going to answer all your questions. So if you have any questions at all, or replay viewers, podcast listeners, if you're listening to this after the fact, I would encourage you to stick around because you're probably going to get answers to questions you probably never knew you had. Because our Nez Nation audience is the most powerful, intelligent awesome online community you're going to find on planet earth. I mean, we've got live streamers, content creators, business owners, professionals. We've got the whole gamut, um, professional content creators. We've got everybody. We've got an amazing audience here at Nez Nation Live. So I promise you, you're going to want to stick around and get your questions ready. So here's the first thing I want to start with. I kind of had this epiphany. It's story time. I kind of had this epiphany when I was walking my dog the other day. And I was like, wow, okay, this is interesting. Every single guru, myself included, have even, you know, touted this for a long, long time. And I and I still believe in it, but I want to I want to clarify. Nez, what do you mean forget your audience? Do this instead. What is this? So let me explain. I was walking my dog the other day and I just kind of had this sort of thought and it just wouldn't go away. It was kind of something that stuck with me and I kind of kept thinking about it and kind of, um, and, and it's something that absolutely I believe, and this is very controversial. I think a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway, because I'm not a theorist. I'm an actual executor. I'm an actual full-time content creator. You hear it all the time. Think about your audience. It's all about your audience. Don't even start creating content. Don't even start a business. Don't even da 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 da. It's all about your audience. Forget. You. I've said this many, many times, right? So I'm going to say something that's a little bit um, different, um, and I I'm going to stand by what I said in the uh, I'm going to stand by what I said in the thumbnail. I think it's absolutely impossible to know exactly what, exactly how, exactly everything there is to know about your audience. I don't care how specific your niche is. 
I don't care if you've been doing this for decades. I don't care what any online guru tells you. I literally think it's impossible to know every single thing. And I know a lot of content creators, this is a bottleneck for them. It absolutely drives them crazy because they're getting this kind of advice all the time. I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to say something a little bit different. And what I'm going to say is forget your audience and think about the viewer. Forget the audience. Think about the listener. Forget the audience. Think about whoever your audience is reading, listening, or watching. And by the way, everything that I'm going to share with you today on how to make online money online as a full-time content creator, how to make a sustainable, real living as a content creator applies to any medium, whether you're a blogger, whether you're a live streamer, a gamer, a podcaster, video content creator, shorts, TikTok, doesn't matter. This applies across the board. And again, remember, get your questions ready because I really want to answer your questions. I think this show will have a ton more uh, helpful value uh, rather than just hearing me spit, you know, for the next hour and a half. I want to hear from you. I want your questions. Vasu on Instagram. Good to see you. Um, thank you so much for being here. So. So what do I mean by that? Nez, what do I mean? So forget the audience and think about the viewer. Think about the listener. The first thing that has allowed me to make a sustainable living as a full-time content creator is that I am not here to chase fame. I'm not here to chase notoriety. I'm not here to chase views. And I most certainly, 1 billion percent, especially when I first started out, I didn't even know you could make money uh, uh, creating content when I first started. I mean, there was such a vast void of monetization options. You compare to when I started years ago, 10 years ago, 10 plus years, to, to you know, uh, now the opportunities are night and day. There's so much more opportunities for you to actually create a living doing this, doing something that hopefully you are doing for the right reasons. And this is what I mean by this. When I first started out, when I first started this YouTube channel back in uh, 2016, you didn't miss anything, Andrew. Good to see you. Come on in. Great to see you, Andrew. And as you're coming in, please tap that thumbs up. I'd really, really appreciate it. I was a full-time adjunct professor. Literally, what does that mean? There's no such thing as a full-time adjunct professor. Adjunct professors are typically part-time professors. I was teaching at like 15 different universities. They called us freeway flyers. We were going from this university to that university to this university, right? And I loved what I did because the money was awful. The administration was awful. The university red tape and bureaucratic nightmare, awful, still is to this day. Um, but I loved teaching. I felt I had something that was worthy of hearing, and I felt I had to say it. Not to sound cliche, not to sound, um, you know, uh, kind of Hallmark card, but I truly felt it was my purpose. I truly felt that I had a way of looking at things and had proven it through data and actual track record. I had a way of looking at things, a way of operating, a way of of, you know, being a great communicator and running businesses that I felt was worthy of sharing. And so I love teaching, right? Literally what I'm doing right now is the same thing. It's the equivalent. Um, but the, the bureaucratic nightmare, like I said, is exactly that it's a nightmare. And so I had a student come up to me. This was back in 2015, say, professor Nez, I just paid six figures for a piece of paper aka a degree, and nobody will hire me. And it absolutely broke my heart. I didn't know anything. And I still don't really don't to this day. I didn't know anything about videography. I didn't know anything about, you know, uh, uh, creating content the way that I do now. Um, not even close. I mean, there's a, there's a <laughs> night and day. Uh, and so I, I was heartbroken by that statement. And so I vowed from that day forward that students would actually get real value from their business degrees. And so I said, I'm going to give away everything for free. 
I'm going to create live streams, video content. I'm going to create courses. I'm going to create masterclasses. You could call this a masterclass in becoming a full-time content creator. Um, and, and I did just that. And there weren't anywhere near the amount of monetization opportunities back then as there are now. I couldn't live stream this easily. There wasn't even a Facebook live. There wasn't even YouTube live. There definitely wasn't Instagram live. There definitely wasn't TikTok. The opportunities that you have now, Facebook wasn't even really a thing either. The opportunities that you have now are abundant, are voluminously more. And so the reason I'm saying this, the reason I'm saying forget your audience, do this instead. The reason I'm saying think about the viewer, think about the listener, think about the, the reader or your readers if you're doing blog or written content it's impossible to know with 100% certainty exactly what your audience wants. It's impossible. I've tried it a billion times. It's impossible. Audience interests change so vastly through the years. And this is why I say start with the right intentions. You want to be a full-time content creator. You want to make money online being a full-time content creator. The most important thing before you ever hit record, before you ever post anything is to have what I believe, this is my opinion, full-time content creator, successful, multiple six-figure businesses. Content has been the engine of all my businesses. Start with the right intention. Start with something of a purpose. Start with something that electrifies your innards. Start with something. I'm going to say this again. That I forget passion. Forget do what you love. Forget all that. Start with something that electrifies your innards. What brings you the most alive? What feels like it's something you were absolutely put on this earth to do. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to talk about that in a second too. By doing that, okay, and by actually creating content from the epicenter of who you are, from the core of the core of your purpose, then that is such a contagious thing. Even if, look, look, you can, you can build a huge audience. You can, you can ha get millions of views. You can build a full-time business with your content creation if you start with that epicenter. And then what I mean by forget your audience, do this instead, and think about your viewer, think about your listener or your reader is this. When you come from that epicenter, instead of it seeming like you're just going through the motions and seeming like, you know what I'm talking about, you know what it feels like when somebody, it seems like they've just literally, they've taken the playbook and they're just going, reading it off a transcript. This is what my audience wants. And, and you're trying, they're trying to hit all these points. Instead of driving yourself crazy with that, come with that electricity. It is the most contagious thing on planet earth. And then when I say, think about the viewer, listener, and reader, then it's all about crafting a concise, clear vision and message for every single post and make it about them. I don't care if it's video. I don't care if it's audio. I don't care if it's a clubhouse or Twitter space. I don't care if it's a blog. I don't care if it's a LinkedIn article, whatever it is, this is communication 101. Start with purpose. Forget about trying to know your audience Think about retention strategies. Think about what they want. Think about how you can get your vision across in as clear, concise, and authentic a manner. If you start with that, I promise you, I promise you, I wish somebody would have told me this 10 years ago when I first started, it will make all the difference if you start with that. Let me know if that makes sense. Give me a hashtag, yeah, yeah. In the comments, Strict City's in the house on Instagram. Yo, Strict, if you're around, come on over to YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook. We're live. Let me do a little bit of a roll call here. Andrew's in the house. Andrew already has a question. Vasu's in the house. Good to see you. My man, Nano. Now, you want to talk about an old school OG content creator. My man, Luis, over here from Tech for Your Needs, has been with me since Periscope days. I mean, we're talking 2015 
when there was no Facebook Live, when there was no YouTube Live, when there wasn't even really an Instagram, there was no TikTok for sure. Uh, it's good to see you, Nano. Lynn is here, the Lynn Nick Show. Good to see you. And my man, Entrepreneur's Toolbox with my man, Jonathan Dunkerley. I call him JD. JD in the house. Brian, good to see you, my man. Vasu, good to see you guys. Come on in. So we already have a question here, but I want to know, did that make sense? I want to just cover this again. We're, we're going to go through it all. How to make money online as a full-time contract. Writer. We're going to go through it all. Hey, there's Annette. Look at that. Annie's in the house. Good to see you, Annie, on Instagram. Um, we're going to go through it all. And I want to take your questions. Get your questions ready. This is the ultimate master course on everything you need to know about being a full-time content creator. If you're somebody who's wondering, you know what, and, and, and forget about full-time. Even if you're somebody who's like, you know what, I want to, I would, it'd be nice to make an extra 500, 200, dare I say a thousand dollars a month creating content. The opportunities now are boundless. I wish we had these opportunities when I first started 10 years ago. I would be a trillionaire by now. I'm not exaggerating. I would be a trillionaire, but more importantly, I would be the happiest trillionaire because this is what electrifies my innards. What electrifies my innards is helping you, helping being a part of this awesome online community, creating content that allows me the privilege of getting these comments, these messages at two in the morning saying, Nez, you changed my life saying, Nez, you inspired me. I now have a full-time business. Hey, Nez, I finally quit the university. Hey, Nez, I finally quit uh, working as a bartender and now I'm doing uh, you know, TikTok full-time. Those messages tear me up inside. They give me more joy. They give me more purpose than anything, right? Besides being a family man, obviously, for my kids and my wife, that's my ultimate purpose. But this is right after that. Good to see you, Annie. Fantastic. Annie is here. Good to see you on Instagram. Okay, so we already have a question, but I want to know if that makes sense. Forget your audience. Think about the viewer. Forget your audience. Think about very controversial. I mean, very different, very new. Forget your audience. Think about your listener. Forget your audience. Think about your reader. What is going to carry them along with the narrative and vision that you're trying to get them across? clearly, concisely, and effectively. That's the best you can do because I truly believe you're never, ever, 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 ever. I know all the gurus tell you this. You're never, ever, ever. Full-time content creator here. Full-time, I have multiple businesses that my content has produced. You're never, ever, ever gonna figure out exactly what your audience wants at all times. Impossible. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Brigetti on Facebook. Fantastic. It's so good to see you. Brigetti, make sure you tap. I would love it if you could tap that thumbs up. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, Andrew, I'm going to answer your question. DJ Strick. Everybody go follow and subscribe to DJ Strick. I was so lucky to be on his stream show. You want to talk about an awesome content creator, an awesome live streamer and podcaster, my man, DJ Strick. It's so good to see you, brother. Thank you so much for being here, man. I'm glad you made it. Okay, Jonathan, I'm going to ask answer your question because I think it's important. Get your questions ready. You want to learn how to make money online as a full-time content creator? What I just dropped on you is, to me, something that is so profound. I had this epiphany not that long ago. I was really excited to share this, and I want to make sure it makes sense. Because if it doesn't make sense, I'm happy to clarify. Andrew states, how can I promote affiliates on social like Facebook without, oh, you, you left this on my post. Good. Without them squashing my viewership whenever I promote, I get create, I get engagement otherwise. So how can I promote affiliates on social without them squashing my viewership wherever I promote? Well, the key to that, Andrew, is don't promote. Promote without promoting. This is a really good point, okay? And I want to I want to say this. The glasses are coming off, okay? You need to understand that advertising and promotion has changed dramatically. 
more brands, more organizations. And I'm going to talk about brand deals. I'm going to talk about sponsorships. Okay. Um, how I make money online as a full-time content creator. I'm going to talk about that. But promotions, brands, organizations, advertising has changed. We saw TikTok commercials on the Super Bowl. Everything has changed. Most companies, most Fortune 500, 100, et cetera, have finally understood, finally learned that advertising on social media needs to be one thing and one thing above all. Capital R real. It needs to be organic. It needs to be authentic. So instead of, this is what I say all the time with your content, you want to make money as a full-time content creator, you never sell with your content. Your content should be um, never about you making money, never about you promoting anything that has to do with you or is going to uh, uh, you know, benefit you in any way, unless the audience comes first, the viewer comes first. The listener comes first. The reader comes first. What is it about what you're promoting that is going to help them solve their problem? If you make it about them and it doesn't feel, this is tricky, and it doesn't feel like a promotion. I'm going to give you an example, as a matter of fact. Right now, Andrew, I'm going to give you an example. You ready for this? Here's an example. So there's really three questions you should always ask yourself if you're promoting anything. Good to see you over here on YouTube, Andrew. Uh, you know what, Brigetti? I'm not live on Amazon. And the reason I'm not is because I'm saving Amazon live for um, when I am actually, you know, talking about products and deals that I found. So I'm not really doing my show on Amazon strictly, um, but that might change. I, I, I don't know. You never know. But this is what I want to say. Yes, Jonathan, share, don't sell. Yes, George Fisher, great thinking. Thank you so much. It's good to see you, Digital Art Drew. Yes, Andrew. So listen to this. You need to ask yourself three questions. And you see the banner that I have up right now? Those of you on Instagram, come on over to YouTube. If you get a chance, I'd really appreciate it. And the link is in my bio. Is this something that your audience will get value from? Is this age appropriate? Some, some creators, some of my clients, they have younger audience, older audience, right? Is this something that they will actually, you know, use, right? I mean, if you're promoting, if, 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 uh, if you're a finance channel or you're a cooking channel and you're promoting a, a, a new, um, you know, liquid uh, uh, plumbing uh, uh, product, um, if it doesn't make sense to your audience, it doesn't make sense. It's going to seem like a, it, it can't feel or seem like an advertisement. It can't feel or seem like a promotion. Does that make sense, Andrew, and everybody listening? You have to communicate it in a way that says, hey, this is something that has worked for me. I've earned your trust as a content creator. I've earned your trust, okay, as a media organization, and you're my audience. I've earned your trust. I'm sharing this with you because I think it will bring you unceasing, amazing value and solve a very specific problem. So right now I have this uh, banner up on my live stream. Podcast listeners can't see this, but I'm going to talk about this. I've been going live. Listen to this, Andrew. Listen to everybody. Everybody listen to this very carefully. I've been going live since 1572, over 500 years, <laughs> a long time. Let's just put it that way. Have fun with it too. I've been going live since 1572. There is not a live stream software. There is not an encoder, third party. I have used every single software, browser-based, uh, downloadable encoder, third party that you can imagine. I've used them all. The one that I'm using right now that allows me to bring this cool ticket taper, that allows me to bring this awesome comment up. Good to see you, Annie. Annie's here on YouTube. Good to see you that allows me to bring up these cool banners that allows me to brand my live streams, right? The creator economy podcast. Welcome to it. Um, is the one that I'm using right now is the one that I recommend to you. So if you're taking any of this seriously at all, if you're serious about making money as a full-time content creator or part-time content creator, or just making a little extra side hustle money, well then you gotta, you know, live streaming has got to be a big part of your content strategy. Um, and I use StreamYard. And so 
in the description and in the pinned comment, you will see a free trial link to StreamYard. And with my link and my link only, check this out. With my link and my link only, you don't even have to put a credit card in. Just with my link. So live streaming has been a huge content strategy for me building my brand, for me building my channel. We just passed 20,000 subscribers. We're about to pass 1.5 million views just on this channel alone, right? And so that's how you do it. You promote without promoting. You talk about how, talk about the benefits, talk about the results. That's how you do it. Yeah, that's it right there, Andrew. Uh, you know, it's interesting because it's it's the, the algorithms. Here's another misnomer about being a full-time content creator. I want to talk about this because this is so uh this is so important. This oh, thank you so much, Bajetti. Thank you. I, I'm gonna follow you. I think I already follow, follow you on Amazon, but if I haven't, I'll follow you back. Yeah, I would love it if you would follow me on Amazon. Here's another way to promote right here. You ready for this? Here's another thing. I get, I get your questions all the time. Listen to this, Andrew and everybody. This is how you become a full-time content creator. You don't rely on direct monetization, but you monetize your brand. Everybody write this down. Do not rely on direct monetization. The answer, the solution to becoming a full-time content creator is you monetize your brand. That's the key. Can I get an amen? Give me an amen in the comments right now. I like that. And it's absolutely 1 trillion percent true. It's absolutely 1 trillion percent true. If you rely solely on AdSense, if you rely solely on these platforms, and don't, don't get me wrong, AdSense is a great revenue stream for me, but it's not the way that I sustain myself full time. It's not even close. It's a very small slice of the pie. I would say AdSense is probably 15 to 20% of the pie as far as all my revenue streams go. And so do not rely on direct monetization. Monetize your brand, okay? I am an Amazon influencer. I get your questions all the time. Nez, what kind of camera should I use? What kind of lighting should I You keep saying content. Content is king. You keep saying content has been the engine to all your businesses, which it has. What kind of microphone, what kind of lighting, what kind of, um, I don't know, capture card, what kind of uh, uh, external storage uh, uh, um, hard drive should I have? What kind of tools, gear? I have my very own Amazon storefront. I have very nicely, neatly organized idea lists of all the best budget-friendly gear, accessories, and tools to get your content creation game cooking go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash professor nez and you can and you'll find everything that i'm using and everything that i vouch for so so it's 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 obvious and and here's the cool thing you if you've really built trust with your audience your audience wants to support you your audience will listen to you. your all audience will follow your advice that's what's called influence i know we're not all crazy about the word influencer and i'm not either but true influence true power okay is being able to earn not just you're not entitled to that trust earning the trust of the people who follow and subscribe to you um, earning their trust because you have helped them, because you have shown them that, hey, this guy Nez or this guy Andrew or, you know, this awesome live streamer Brigetti, they actually care about me. They actually care about helping me and they have helped me. You see that? It's absolutely huge. Yes, Jonathan says, been leaning on to more lives recently. Glad I have. You know, going live is also a way to circumvent all of the problems, issues, and tech involved with video editing, time, time is the ultimate commodity and the ultimate aspect of really control and management that a content creator needs to implement if they want to be successful and go full time and make money online. But what I just said, you know, a couple of minutes ago, do not 
rely on direct monetization through the platforms. Rely on the monetization of your brand is the absolute mission statement, the thesis statement of this entire stream. It just is. Yes, Nano has a great comment here. Don't build your businesses on rented spaces. That's exactly right. Hey, Sharkfin Tech is in the house. Good to see you, brother. Come on in. Yes, Andrew says, I love doing digital events. Fantastic. Brigetti, yeah, please send me a uh, send me a, a link. Thank you so much, Brigetti. I really appreciate that. So I hope that makes a lot of sense about going full-time and how I make money online as a content creator. If you come with purpose, if you come with vision, a true cause, I've chased money before. Believe me, I've chased notoriety before. It doesn't work because this is the number one thing that afflicts all content creators. The number one thing that afflicts all content creators is burnout. And you will have burnout more readily and more frequently if you're doing something just to chase views. You know, I had a client the other day. This was actually very recently. I had a client who is a, this is a story time. This is really important. You will make money as a full-time content creator if you come with vision, purpose, and a real true cause that electrifies your innards. If you're chasing views, if you're chasing money, if you're chasing notoriety, I think you're headed towards the ultimate killer of content creators, burnout, especially a lot more readily, frequently, and faster. I had a client the other day. This was literally a week ago. James, if you're out there, love you to death. Um, I had a client the other day who, um, you know, is a, is a notable, has notable financial track record. Okay. Um, but they weren't, you know, specialized in this specific content niche. I'm sure this relates to a lot of uh, people out there, but they see, you know, a big influencer like a meet Kevin or Graham Stephan, right? Um, true value tax. I love true value tax. It's a great channel. Um, and they think I can do that. I can do that. And then as I further delve deeper into their background and their history and their, um, you know, what they're, what they actually excel at their kind of specialization, it's nowhere near what Graham Stephan and these other uh, uh, influencers, as they're called, can do. And this client of mine said, well, can I just, you know, I don't know, take their videos and just copy them and just do it my way or take their videos and just, you know, pretty much read up on it and research it. I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of people who have done that. There's a lot of people who've profited from doing that short term. This is another myth that I have to dispel. This is another aspect of being a full-time content creator that I have to communicate to you guys. This is and always will be a long, long-term endeavor. You can do what this client of mine wanted to do. And by the way, I've, of course, I advised them against it, but they're going to do whatever they want to do, right? Um, you can make short-term money by trying to gimmick and trying to fool your audience. But remember what I told you, Andrew, and everybody listening and watching. Remember what I told you. Your audience can smell if you're doing it for the right reason or the wrong reason. The biggest mistake, and when I work with clients, and I know a lot of people have made this mistake in the past, including myself, the biggest mistake you can make as a content creator is underestimating your audience. If you think you can pull the wool over the eyes of your audience, if you think you can fool them, you are headed towards a natural disaster. Hey, Ethan Klein on Instagram. Good to see you, brother. Let me know you're here. You are headed towards a natural disaster. Your audience can smell BS cooking a million miles away. And by the way, why would you want to build a sort of artificial audience anyway? The number one asset, okay? And this is something I wish somebody would have told me back in the day. The number one asset that a content creator possesses is not followers, 
It's not subscribers. It's not uh, AdSense. It's not, you know, having a, 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 the algorithm love you. It's not, you know, a viral video, the number or viral, whatever the number one asset any content creator has and possesses is their audience. So if you're building an audience fraudulently by thinking you can fool them and thinking that, you know, I can just pull the wool over their eyes. I can go through the motions of being a cooking influencer, a finance influencer, a tech influencer, whatever vertical, whatever niche that you think, you know, has the higher CPM or the highest CPMs or the highest financial viability. If you're not, if that does not electrify your innards, I'm going to say this a lot throughout the stream. And if you're just going through the motions, your audience is going to smell that cooking. A, B, you're going to head it towards the ultimate death of any content creator, which is burnout. And C, you're building a fraudulent artificial audience. You're not building real community. The name of the game, guys, being a full-time content creator, having a monetized personal brand is a long term endeavor. It always has been. It always will be. Hey, resume workshop. Good to see you. I hope you're doing really well on Insta. Hey, there's Luis. Luis, good to see you. Uh, Brigetti on Facebook says, I agree a hundred percent. Absolutely. Andrew says my live events are my passion. My affiliate promos are just for side hustle. There you go. I love it. That is awesome. Fantastic. It's so good to see you guys. I absolutely love it. Jonathan says, you still have to plan, but then planning can be repurposed. Live streaming. Oh yeah. Re uh, repurposing is the great wonder, the eighth wonder of the world. I love repurposing. Yeah, absolutely. Your number one asset as a full-time content creator, because here's the deal. These algorithms change all the time. These platforms change all the time. I mean, who knows? TikTok might be banned tomorrow. So if you're building your entire empire on rented property, as my man Luis Mano just said not that long ago, what happens if they get banned? I mean, the FBI is going after them. The FTC is warning the president of the United States and the White House that, you know, TikTok should be banned in the U.S. I don't think it's going to happen, but this is, my point is, is anything can happen. But if you have access to your audience in the shape or form, like something akin, like an email list, okay, that is something that you own. That's called IP. You want to own your own IP, intellectual property. It's absolutely essential. Is that true, Vasu? You're kidding me. Vasu says TikTok is already banned in India. No way. When did that happen? How did I miss that? I thought that was like one of their biggest audience. Oh, no, actually shorts. YouTube shorts is biggest um, viewership is from India. That's for sure. Is that true, Vasu? That's insane. I did not know that. I literally had no idea. For the past two years. Okay, wow. Okay. Had no clue. Thank you. This is what I love about coming to a Nez Nation Live. This is what I love about our Creator Economy live stream podcast show. You don't just get me who's been doing this for decades, but you get all these amazing content creators, professionals, live streamers. That's why I want you to become an insider. Speaking of IP, professornez.com forward slash insider is the number one free newsletter that will guarantee you that you will never, ever, ever be out of the know. You will always be in the know on what the latest and greatest ways for you to monetize in the creator economy. All the latest videos, live streams, contests, giveaways, some behind the scenes, exclusive content. Just all you have to do is join our free newsletter, professornez.com forward slash insider. I also have a gift for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. I love the questions. This is your chance to ask a full-time content creator any question you have. And if you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you could share this out. Tag me on Twitter. Share it on Twitter. Share it on your community tab on YouTube. Share it on LinkedIn. Share it on Facebook. I would really, really appreciate it because if you don't know, let me let you know. Sharing 
is caring. So I would really, really appreciate it. It takes you two seconds. Just tap that share button and share this out. It would mean the absolute world to me. Thank you. Um, in the pinned comment and in the description and show notes, I have a free gift for you. It's a PDF. It is a very large PDF that goes through 28 credible ways that you can make money online. I guarantee you, hey, Levi Lasak is in the house. Good to see you, Levi. I guarantee you, okay, that 75% of the things that you can do online to make money are probably things you've never even heard of. So I have a huge, huge PDF. It's absolutely free. Good to see you, Levi Lasak in the house. My man, it was so much fun hanging out with you on Clubhouse the other day. That was literally, Levi, the first time I've been on Clubhouse in ages. Much like this is the first time I've gone live on Instagram in a hot minute. We're obviously live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn right now. But um, I haven't been live on Instagram in ages. La Diosa. La Diosa is in the house from Las Vegas. Good to see you, La Diosa K. How are you? Please tap that thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. So yeah, um, go to professorness.com forward slash insider free creator economy newsletter. Absolutely free. Plus, I got a free gift for you in the pin comment. It's a free like 13, 20 page PDF, 28 credible, realistic ways for you to make money online. I want you to make Monet. I want you to. I mean, isn't that what everybody says? Isn't that what everybody says, that if you can do what you love and make money at it, you'll never work another day in your life? I mean, I get made fun of you guys all the time, even by my own kids. I have a laptop crazy glued, okay, to my palms. I am literally working from the moment my eyes open to the moment my eyes close. And it doesn't feel like work, y'all. It doesn't feel even a nanosecond of work because this is my purpose. This is what I was meant to do. I truly feel with every molecule in my body, this is what I was meant to do. This is my duty on this thing called earth. And so that's how I've been able to be so successful. And that's why I say it's so important that you start with the right intention. Now I told you, I told you, oh, this is a great question. Vasu stick around. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that. Everybody got that by the way. Vasu just asked a really good question. How do I remove demonetization from my FB reels? Trust me. I've been talking about FB reels for a while. I'm going to tell you exactly. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. Okay. Um, Get your questions ready, y'all. Ask away. Ask your questions. Now is the time. Um, what I was going to say before I saw that is um, if you don't know what you're, you know, Nez, you keep saying start at the epicenter of who you are. Start at the core of who you are. You keep saying, uh, you know, have a purpose, have a cause. That's what's enabled you to avoid burnout. That's what's enabled you to work every day without ever working, without it ever feeling like work. That's what's enabled you to be consistent. That's what's enabled you to build all these different channels and brands. What if I don't know what my purpose is? Anybody ever think of that? Let me know. Give me a hashtag me in the comments right now if that thought has crossed your mind or if maybe you have that challenge as well. It's not a problem. It's a challenge. I feel like a self-help guru now. Let's all say it together now. It's not a problem. It's a challenge. <laughs> Sorry. I had to do that. <laughs> um, that's not a problem, by the way. It really isn't. Here's what I would say is if you want to find out what it is that electrifies your innards, I would say, what is it that keeps you obsessed? What is it that you obsess about? What is it that makes your heart go like this? beat fast. What makes your heart do this? Not this. Okay. I got a job. I make money. I live paycheck to paycheck. I do this. I do that. What makes you come alive? What makes your heart do this? Find out what that is. 
experiment, try different things. If you're still at a loss, just keep going. It will happen. More often than not, this is going to be something that I think a lot of people are going to say, maybe you're going to roll your eyes when I say this. But more often than not, if you get yourself out of the way, what you were meant to do will find you and discover you, not the opposite. It's actually vice versa. If you just get all the thinking out of the way, stop thinking. Don't think about it. This is not a thought process. You got to use your higher intelligence. Your higher intelligence is in your chest. Don't use the dude in your noggin. The dude in your noggin usually gets you in trouble, especially when you overthink. Don't use the dude in your noggin, okay? The mind is an amazing servant, but a terrible master. So use the dude inside your chest. That's your higher intelligence. Stop thinking. Don't analyze. Don't try to discover. If you just get yourself out of the way, usually it will discover you. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. And I know it will happen to you. Let me know if that makes sense. I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know. If you haven't already, please tap that thumbs up. Don't forget in the pinned comment is a free gift for you, a free PDF. Also, I would love it if you'd become an insider because this is our free creator economy VIP insider list where you get all the latest and greatest on everything you need to know about monetizing in the creator economy. Welcome to the creator economy podcast live stream show. I am your host, Professor Nez. Y'all can call me Nez. Okay. So we got a great question from Vasu. Get your questions out, y'all. I want to answer all your questions. This is your moment of glory. This is your chance to ask a full-time content creator, somebody who runs actual media organizations. It's not a YouTube channel. It's not a TikTok. It's not a Facebook. It's not a LinkedIn. These are media organizations where I have access and I have influence over, you know, a lot of people who are seeing, looking, watching, our content, okay? You have to think of yourself as a business. Think of yourself as a Netflix. You have to have a Netflix mentality, not a Blockbuster mentality. We all know what happened to Blockbuster. Hello. Okay. We have a great question here from Vasu's Vegetarian Kitchen. I love the name of your channel, by the way. Love the name of your channel. How do I remove demonetization on my FB Reels? Okay. So first of all, this happened to everybody. It literally happened to everybody. I got demonetized not that long ago. And it just, it's a total glitch on Facebook's part. Now, this is what happened with myself and a couple of clients that I helped with this. And I'm going to share them with you, Vasu. When, try to figure out when was the approximate date that you got the demonetization. By the way, if you don't know exactly when you got the demonetization, kind of somewhere around the time that you got the demonetization. And then, hey, Carlos, good to see you. And then what I want you to do is, even if, because I did this too, and they were totally original, and you can always upload them later. What I would do is I would delete. That's what I told clients to do, and it actually worked. Delete the last two to three reels that you posted within that seven day span from the day that you got demonetized to seven, five to six days prior, and then delete two or three reels. Hopefully you have backups or just download them first before you delete them. And then that has worked out well for myself and my clients. Okay. Hey, Carlos, it's good to see you. Carlos Phoenix in the house on Facebook. Yes, he's building a Netflix. There you go, baby. I love it. I love it. That's how you need to do it. Think of yourself, as, even if it's just for fun or kicks and giggles, you need to think of it as a business. All businesses need two things. You need traffic and you need conversion. Every business needs that on planet Earth. If you're a brick and mortar online, doesn't matter. You need people walking into the store. You need to attract people to your store, to your content. Once they get there, you need to compel them to buy or opt in or keep watching or keep listening. Traffic and conversion. Every single business on planet Earth needs those two things. That's business 101. 
If you run your YouTube channel, not just I'll post and see what happens. If you run your Facebook, you run your Amazon, you run your TikTok as just I'll just post and see what happens or I'll just post. And actually, as a matter of fact, let me take that back. I kind of want you to post and don't worry about it initially. But think of it as a business. Think about always getting better. Think about what's going to retain these people. Think about what's going to keep them coming back. Think about what's going to keep them, you know, long term. Remember, you want to own your own IP. It's all about intellectual property. Okay, Vasu, yeah, don't, I, I wouldn't re-upload it. Um, so Vasu was saying, I, I, I thought the same. I've re-uploaded the same and that same cannot be monetized. Yeah, so what I would do is wait. Uh, wait until you fully get monetized on your channel again and then wait a couple of months. I mean it before you um before you repost yeah facebook is is probably i would say the toughest place on planet earth right now hopefully they're going to change this they keep saying they're going to change this and if you want to talk about platforms we can talk about platforms um but but facebook is probably one of the hardest places right now to 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 get cooking as a content creator i truly believe that a lot of people might disagree with me but the reason I say that is, number one, there's so many unjustified flags. Hey, Andrew, I love you, man. It's so good to see you. Hopefully you subscribe. Hopefully you become an insider. I want to see you more because you ask good questions, and I'm here to serve you, brother. So hopefully you'll come back. Um, it's just one of the toughest platforms because they have zero creator support. You cannot get. I've been demonetized wrongfully a million and six times on Facebook. It's, it's impossible to actually talk to a human being. It's impossible to actually get support. Okay. And, you know, um, it's, it's just the, the, the amount of flags and there's the, the problem with Facebook is YouTube gives you warnings. Even TikTok now gives you warnings. Most platforms will give you a warning because 99% of the time it's totally innocent. If you post something that goes against their community guidelines or their content monetization policies, et cetera, et cetera, 99% of the time it's totally innocent and the content creator was unaware. But Facebook gives you zero warning. They literally just go, okay, you're done. Later, you're demonetized. You're like, are you kidding me? Thank you, Andrew. It's great to see you. Great question from La Diosa. I'm going to get to you uh, in a second, La Diosa. They give you zero warning. They need to change this. There needs to be at least a three strike rule or something. Um, they need to, they need to, I mean, every single client I've worked with, every single Facebook channel and brand that I have has been wrongfully demonetized. It's never once been rightfully or justifiably demonetized. Never. What does that tell you? I mean, their track record, their bots or absolute garbage. Burke makes stuff in the house. Good to see you, brother, on Instagram. We're live all over. Burks is an old uh, clubhouse buddy of mine. I hope you're doing well. Happy holidays, sir. You and your family. I hope you're doing great. Oh, finally, Anthony makes it. For crying out loud, Anthony. You're only 17 hours late, bro. <laughs> I'm just teasing, AL. I love you to death. You know that. I love you to death, AL. It's good to see you. <laughs> Vasu says, I re-uploaded the same reel with... Yeah, no, no, Vasu, this is what you need to do, okay? Let me just finish my thought, because I really, truly hope Facebook changes, but it's slow, slow is the going right now. But Vasu, I don't want you re-uploading that same reel. Delete the reels in that seven-day span. Do not re-upload for another three to four months, if, if not even longer. Thank you, Burke. I appreciate it, man. Good to see you, dude. I hope you're doing okay. He says, life is wonderful. Love to hear that, man. Big fist bump to you, brother. Fantastic. You were what, Anthony? Anthony, do you know how upset I am with you? You were walking your mom's dog. What's That's more important than watching a, a, a Nez Nation live stream? What's the matter with you, Anthony? <laughs> oh, man, that's so cute. No, I love it. I, I I walk my dog all the time, too. I walk my dog every day, so I, I appreciate that. But you should be here, AL. What's wrong with you, man? Dr. Elo in the house. Yes, the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Elo. Good to see you, brother. Huge fist bump to Dr. Elo, the live streaming master. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing really, really well. 
Everybody go follow and subscribe to Dr. Elo because he is crushing it. And I love his live streams. I love what you're doing on TikTok too, Dr. Elo. I'm watching, man. I'm watching. Fleas before play. <laughs> okay, Anthony, that you got me there. You did, you did get me there. I love it. Okay, we got a great question. Now is the time to get your questions ready, y'all. We've talked about the keys, right? We've talked about what I do. I'm going to say that sentence again, that, that mission thesis of this entire live stream is do not rely on monetization through the platforms. You need to monetize your brand. When you monetize your brand, the platforms become moot. Regardless, you can discard them. You need to build your own IP, intellectual property. This is a long-term endeavor. Don't think about your audience. Think about the viewer. Think about the listener. Think about the reader. Because it's impossible to nail down. Audiences' interests change like the wind, okay? And so I'm telling you right now, um, everything, if you're just joining us, replay viewers, podcast listeners, you want to watch this from the beginning, take out a pad and pen. I would take vast notes if I were you. I will be there, AL. Let me know. I will definitely be there. Dr. Elo on Insta. Good to see you, Dr. Elo. I will be there, AL. Just let me know. I will be there. Okay, La Diosa. Share it in our Discord, too, our Nez Nation Discord. Okay, La Diosa has a great question. If you have any questions about building your brand, about creating content where you can actually make money, dare I say, become a full-time content creator like yours truly, now is the time. This is your opportunity to ask questions. Oh, yeah, baby. I, you know what is funny, Dr. Elo? Dr. Elo's on IG now. Oh, hey, Kevin, one of my students. Kevin's in the house. Um, you know, I have not gone live on IG in ages. And so I, it's so ridiculous of me. It's like I go live on all, why not go live on IG too? So I'm super pumped that you're here. Thank you for being here on IG. Okay. La Diosa K says, what should we be posting on LinkedIn? Okay. I have something that I think is even more powerful than video on LinkedIn. Even though LinkedIn has really become an amazing, good morning, Kevin. It's great to see you. Um, LinkedIn has become a really amazing place for content creators, an amazing place to actually turn your profile into a website, like a, like a, a content profile, like almost like an Instagram or a YouTube. It's, it's a content page. Now LinkedIn has changed dramatically over the last five to six years. I mean, dramatically it's, they now have a new toggle button that you can turn on called creator mode. Plus the people who have money, the people who do all the hiring, the executives at all the studios, the executives at Google, the executives at Microsoft, the executives at IBM, the executives at Berkshire Hathaway, the executives, any company, pick any company, YouTube, TikTok, they're all, all the brands that you want to work with, all the sponsors that you want to work with, they're all on LinkedIn. People with money are on LinkedIn. And so... I have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel called LinkedIn Branding. I would highly recommend if you really want to start building on LinkedIn, which I think everybody absolutely should, um, which is going to lead to the last thing I'm going to say to you on how I make money online as a full-time content creator, which is an omni-channel presence, okay? Um, I was told my entire beginning when I first started creating content, I was told, Nez, you're everywhere. That's, that's terrible. That's awful. You need to be in one place only. A bunch of BS. Worst advice. These were people who were so-called online experts, so-called personal branding experts, so-called YouTube gurus that were telling me, Nez, you're everywhere. That's the wrong way to do it. You're not going to build. You're not going to grow. You're not going to make money. Fast forward, multiple six figures later, full-time income later, I'm everywhere. And it has paid massive dividends for me. One of the places that I have over 20,000 followers and over 230 recommendations from actual clients is on LinkedIn. 
because LinkedIn is huge. Dr. Elo says LinkedIn is becoming my one of my favorite platforms. AL says, I love LinkedIn. No, La Diosa, I'm going to answer this too, because it's a great question. I'm going to answer your question too. Okay, what should we be posting on LinkedIn? I'm definitely going to uh, answer your question. Um, but this is this is something that I, I it relates to the last thing I was going to say about being a full-time content creator. You cannot build... Uh, you cannot put all your ducks into one platform. I think if you're not an omni-channel content creator in 2023 and beyond, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to go full-time. I truly believe that. You still can. Don't get me wrong. You could be a Facebook expert. You could be a YouTube expert. You could stick to Twitch. You could stick to TikTok. You totally can. But I truly believe diversifying, being on multiple platforms, having an omni-channel presence, is essential. Absolutely essential. So what you should be posting, what you should be posting um, on, hold on a second. My dog is going crazy. What you should be posting on LinkedIn is understanding, first of all, who are the people that are there? What is your objective that you want to achieve there? Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, I'll be right back. My dog is losing it. I will be right, right back. Give me just a second. Podcast listeners, I apologize. Oh, actually, never mind. Okay, my wife just texted me. Okay, never mind. I'm here. I'm here. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. <laughs> okay, I'm here. I'm here. So, so this is what you should be posting. This is what you should be posting on LinkedIn. Okay, this is really, really important. Video is always something that does really, really well everywhere. But I think what's more important than video, I have been getting insane traction. I don't think I've said this anywhere, by the way. You're hearing this first. Yes, Carlos. Carlos says, bring your brand to live. Yes, absolutely love it. What I've been getting thousands of impressions, what I have been getting a ton of traction is with LinkedIn polls. If I were you building audience, building conversation, because LinkedIn is they're literally their motto. I was in the creator accelerator program and the initial creator accelerator program as an alumni. Um, this is a program where they pick the best creators on LinkedIn uh, and they take them through this awesome program where you get funding and you get, you know, inside tips and tricks. LinkedIn's motto is to create conversation. That's literally their mission statement. They want to create conversations, right? And so let me just say this really quickly. The number one thing that I think is working best on LinkedIn, posting text, long form text with contextualized captions. Posting video is still great. Posting photos with long form text and captions is great too. But the number one thing I would be posting on LinkedIn right now that's getting tons of traction is you heard it here first, folks, LinkedIn polls. I'm getting insane traction. Polls that that really ask poignant questions that get your audience thinking, get your audience engaged. Remember the mission statement at LinkedIn. We want to create conversation. It's all about creating conversation because just like any platform, when you get people thinking, you get people talking, you get people engaged, they tend to stay on the platform. The longer people stay on the platform, the longer they can show ads and that's how they make a profit. That's any platform, by the way, any platform. But specifically, LinkedIn's mission statement has been, we want to create conversation. We want to create and engage people into conversations. So that I would say is the number one thing because it's working out great for me. Let me know in the comments if you have done LinkedIn polls. Let me know in the comments. Replay viewers, let me know how you've done with being in the comments. Yeah, having an omni-channel presence, La Diosa, is absolutely key. This doesn't mean you have to drive yourself crazy. This doesn't mean you have to be, you know, posting, uh, you know, five times a day, 20 times a day. I hear a lot of people say these kind of things. No, because that's going to burn you out faster than anything. Whether you like what you're doing and you're you're electrified by your innards or not, 
um, that's going to, that's going to burn you out more than anything. Don't think of it as, yes, I need to be everywhere. Yes. I need to be posting every single day. No, you don't have to do that. But the beautiful thing is the eighth wonder of the world, this thing called repurposing content is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you can get a lot of miles. You can get more bang for your buck by actually repurposing one piece of content on all the different platforms. I do this with my shorts, my reels, my TikToks, Facebook reels, LinkedIn. I will create a 60 second or less short form video. I did four yesterday. I recorded four because shorts revenue sharing is coming. Uh, TikTok revenue sharing is coming. Reels, there's, they're already putting ads on reels. So revenue sharing on Instagram and Facebook, it's coming. It's already here in a lot of uh, um, circumstances, instances. And so um, easy, easy, easy to be on, uh, on all channels without driving yourself crazy because of this beautiful invention, what I call the eighth wonder of the world, repurposing content. It's absolutely everything. La Diosa, what a great question. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Put a giant Q, a capital Q, followed by your question in the comments. Replay viewers, live stream, a uh, uh, podcast uh, uh, listeners, there is a questionnaire form in the description. There's a questionnaire form in the description. If you want to fill that out, I may actually, not only will I answer your question live on air, but I might do an entire video and give you a shout out. So it really behooves you to um, it really behooves you to to um, leave your question in that questionnaire form by all means. Awesome, Ladiosa. I love hearing that. Thank you so much. I love love hearing that. So um, some more things related to creating uh, a full time income. Some more things to, if you want to make money online. And like I do and create content, be a full-time content creator. I want to also talk about this, which I think is really, really important. So we talked about indirect monetization and direct monetization, right? We talked about not relying just on direct monetization, AKA AdSense, but actually monetizing your brand. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do this. You can sell Real products, digital products, you can um, start a membership, kind of like a very subscription model uh, of, from your content, which is giving your viewers, your audience, your listeners, whatever, um, special access to exclusive content and having them pay for that, like a Patreon or a membership site. Um, you can uh, you can create, um, so I said digital courses, digital products. You can do affiliate marketing, which is such an amazing thing where any product or service that you believe in and that you think would be beneficial to your audience, like I did with StreamYard, like I did with Amazon, um, all you need to do is find out if that company, it could be Target, Home Depot, it could be any company, it could be any business, you know, B&H Photo, find out if they have an affiliate program, sign up for it, you share a link and anytime somebody makes a qualified purchase using your link, you get a commission. I have clients and I myself are making six figures just on affiliate marketing. I mean, it's a huge part of my revenue model. Again, you can actually do affiliate marketing right away. As a matter of fact, I have one client that I advised to create three channels, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, TikTok, actually four, and Shorts. So they are literally just started and they're already making money doing this. They're creating short form video product reviews and putting them all over the short form content platforms. They've been doing this for only three to six months. They're already making really, really decent income from this. You're actually showing instead of telling, you're showing the audience a demonstration and an unboxing how this product or service has helped you, has helped you in your life, your personal life, your professional life, etc. And then by adding that value, saying, hey, in the link in the comments or hey, in the description, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can get it right now. I mean, people are happy to support you, especially if you solve their problem. 
Get your questions ready, y'all. If you have any other questions, this is your chance. Even if you've already asked a question, this is your chance. I'm going to take a few more questions, but I just want to say this too. If you like this kind of content, if this is the kind of stuff that interests you, if you're like, Nez, I want to monetize. Nez, I want to make extra money. I want to maybe perhaps go full-time. I want to make money in the creator economy. That's what this show is all about. That's what this channel is is all about. And by the way, how many podcast lovers do we have out there? Because I don't know if you know this, but all of these shows, okay, that we do live here end up on our podcast on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to, to, to podcasts. It's the Creator Economy Podcast with yours truly, Professor Nez. Go check it out. Subscribe and follow. I love listening to podcasts. I don't know about you guys, but I love listening to podcasts. I usually listen to podcasts on my commutes in the car when I'm walking my dog, or usually first thing in the morning when I'm getting ready, I got my coffee, I'm checking my dashboards, I'm responding to emails from clients, you know, just getting ready for the day, making my to-do list. I love having podcasts in the background. Yeah, Vasu, me too, my friend, me too. So if you haven't already, go follow our podcast. I mean, it's phenomenal. If you want to, and wherever you go, wherever you um, listen to podcasts, you can find us, uh, whether it's Spotify, whether it's uh, Apple, Stitcher, um, wherever you listen to podcasts, Google podcasts, we are there. The creator economy podcast with yours truly, my man, uh, 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 Professor Nez. Yes. Vasu says, I love listening and watching to video podcasts. I do too. Um, long-term guys, this is a long-term thing. Do not think that success arrives immediately. Um, there's too many coconuts and yachts, advertisers and promoters, you know, shysters out there that are selling and pitching you on this idea that all you got to do is start a YouTube channel and the money just starts pouring in. It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. I'm here to tell you that, yes, I do video podcasts on Spotify. Yes. So you can see all of this on Spotify. Spotify video is a huge, fairly new thing. And I love I love video uh, uh, on Spotify. So Vasu, go follow us on uh, on Spotify as well. Yes, please. Some of you guys listening on Spotify right now, we love y'all. And I would love it if you could leave us a five-star review. That would really, really mean a lot to us. Um. So think of this as a long-term endeavor. This is a long game, okay? And so you need to really make sure because I can't tell you how many content creators that I've worked with that were literally inches away from success, but because they weren't seeing immediate results, they quit and they gave up. I promise you, if you can get over that hump get over that feeling of now, now, now. It has to happen now. I don't have the patience. I don't have the time. I don't have the da, 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 da. You need to get rid of that mentality. You need to think of this long-term. This has to be a long-term endeavor. There is no coconuts and yachts. There is no um, get rich quick. There is no, um, I just start posting and the money pours in. I know there's a lot of people touting that and selling that, but it just doesn't exist doesn't exist. Awesome. La Diosa. La Diosa says, I love video podcasts and mainly listen to audiobooks. I mean, La Diosa, you can watch and listen to this, our show on Spotify video. We are the creator economy podcast on Spotify. You can go listen to us there. And I would love it if you would do that. As a matter of fact, that would mean the absolute world to me. Because I, I think I mostly listen to all my podcasts on Spotify anyway. And I've got a nice, beautiful kind of list of uh, podcasts and playlist. Yeah, absolutely, AL. That's a good idea, my friend. That's a really, really good idea. Love it. Um, if you put in the time, the effort, blood, sweat, and tears and really, really want this to happen, you will make it happen. I promise you, you will make it happen. There is an audience out there for everybody. There is a viewership, a listenership, a readership out there for everybody. 
you have to think of the beginning as your learning curve, you paying your dues. Okay. This channel that you're watching this on, just this channel is over eight years old. The first four years I got squadoosh. Four years, y'all. Four years. You look at Mr. Beast. I mean, I know that's not the best example, but actually it might just be the best example. I mean, Mr. Beast didn't get anywhere for seven years until really 2019. Is that when that's when his channel really started cooking? Uh, and I think he started in 2012 or 2011. I can't remember. So it took him seven years to get anything going at all on his channel. So if you think of this as long-term, if you think with the right expectations, realistic expectations, I promise you, you're going to win. And you'll get better and better. You can fly the plane while you're flying. Wait, that didn't make sense. <laughs> you can build the plane while you're flying. You can fly the plane. Hey, guess what? You can fly the plane while you're flying it. <laughs> oh, you don't say, Nez. What a goober. <laughs> you can build the plane while you're flying it. Okay. Um, things are changing at such a fast pace. I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many, uh, you know, courses you've taken they're probably obsolete, you know, after a couple of months because everything changes in the media landscape and the content creation and the creator economy at breakneck speeds, which is why I go live every single week, which is why our podcast is new episodes every single week, which is why you should follow us on Spotify, on Apple, we're everywhere. And so um, long-term, this is a long-term endeavor. Okay, anybody else have any other questions at all? I'm happy to answer them. The Salon Guy is in the house on Insta. How you doing, Salon Guy? Salon Guy, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you passed a million. Is that right? You passed a million subscribers. Congratulations. Fist bump to you, Salon Guy. So great to see you, brother. How are you, man? One of our old school clubhouse uh, buddies. Congratulations, man. That's terrific. That is a milestone of a milestone of a milestone. A million subscribers. That's phenomenal. Good for you. Yes, Anthony, this is just the beginning of the creator economy. I mean, if I had these opportunities, we're live everywhere, Salon Guy. We're live on, on Facebook, YouTube. If I had these opportunities 10 years ago, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that I would have retired by now. There's no doubt. In my, I mean, of course, I'll never retire because I love doing this too much. I'll be working till I'm 97 or hopefully if I make it that long. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, you know, the 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 worry free, stress free, the ability to just be even. I mean, I'm pretty free now, but even more free than I am now um, and maybe even hire a bigger team you know, which is important, I think, as you build your empire. I'm sure the salon guy has a, a team. Um, it's so good to see you, man. I don't ever go live on Instagram, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know why I never thought of this before. Um, but uh, I kind of love going live on Instagram. Um, you know, the opportunities that we have now versus 10 years ago are night and day. Literally night and and day. I love this comment from Brigetti. Brigetti says, I've retired into live streaming. I love that. That's a great comment. Good for you. Good for you. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Very well said, Nano. The last day I take my breath is the last day I will stop learning. Good for you. Yeah, Salangai. That's fantastic. Salangai says, I run solo and one or two people max help wise. Same here. Same here. I've got a couple people that I outsource a few things to, and that's about it. And so I used to have a VA, a virtual assistant, but I, I really didn't need one at that time. Um, but yeah, I think if you're not like me and maybe even the salon guy, you might feel the same way. If you're not like me, um, who loves every single step of the process, I love the editing. I love the shooting. I love creating thumbnails. A lot of people don't like my man, Levi Lasek, who was here earlier. He has editors, he has graphic designers, uh, he has people working for him. He's got a great big team, you know, and, um, you know, his channel has uh, uh, almost 20,000 subscribers. So there's the there's an example of a content creator who 
it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. It's, are you really reaching the kind of people that you want to reach that aligns to your objective? So if your objective is leads or sales, you know, is your content abiding by that? If your, if your um, objective is, is brand awareness and thought leadership, is your content adhering to that? This is a guy who has, you know, uh, you could almost say is a micro influencer, right? Um, and he has a huge team and he's making bank. He's making seven figures with his YouTube channel, getting the right kind of leads. We had him on the show not that long ago. Big shout out to Levi Lasak. Awesome, Salon guy. Thank you for stopping by, man. I hope to see you again soon, brother. Have a wonderful day. Brigetti says, I also do everything myself. Yes, fantastic. Okay, guys, if you don't have any other questions, I would love to answer any questions. Now is your time. I just want to remind you of a couple of things. Yo, what's up? I'm for real. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thank you for being here on Instagram Live, something I hardly ever do, but I need to do. I'm going to do more of Instagram Live for sure. Um, I just want to remind you, become an insider. That way you never miss out. Subscribe to our podcast. We're live on Spotify, Apple, everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And also, don't forget the free gift that I have for you in the pinned comment and in the description and show notes. It is a 30-page PDF going through 28 realistic, legitimate ways, credible ways that you can start making money online. Content creation is just one of them. But I want to give you this gift because, you know, I'm Santa Nez, right? Hello. I'm not going to ho-ho-ho, but <laughs> I'm Santa Nez and I'm giving you gifts. So go check that out in the description and the show notes. Again, you're watching the Creator Economy live stream podcast show. We're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Insta. Hello, Insta. I would highly, highly recommend if you never want to miss out, we're going to be doing contests too. We're going to be doing giveaways. We're going to be doing, I'm going to give away Amazon gift cards. Santa Nez is coming, y'all. I'm telling you right now, you want to become an insider right this second. ProfessorNez.com forward slash insider. I'm for real says, I like content creation as a side hustle, but how do I make time for it around my main job? Okay, this is a good question. We got another question. So we're not leaving right now. Brigetti, good to see you. I hope you can stick around. This is actually a great question. So I'm um, for real says, I, I like it as a side hustle, but how do I make time for it around my main job? I'm struggling with motivation. Great question. This is an awesome, awesome question. So this is how you do it, I'm um, for real. So first, it should be a something that you do part-time. It should be something that you do on the weekends. Um, the motivation is, is don't chase the money. Don't just chase the views. What is it that you like about content creation? What is it that, that, that really, I've said this earlier in the stream, what is it about it that you should really choose something that's not about just money, views, or notoriety? What is it that really you feel like is your purpose? What is it that you, like, here's the deal. Content creation is not a plan B. Content creation is not a, you know, I'll go be a doctor and lawyer, you know, or I'll go be a, you know, I mean, it's my, it's kind of like something if I need money or if I need cash, I'll do it. Or just everybody else is making money. I should do it too. It's not one of those things. It should be something that you absolutely have to talk about, speak about, communicate about, create. It has to come from your core of your core. If it comes from the core of your core, you will always have motivation. You will never lack motivation and you'll avoid the number one killer of anybody creating content, which is burnout. Don't be so hard on yourself. You have a full-time gig. I had a full-time gig when I, when I started this as a side hustle and now it's my major hustle. It takes time. It takes hard work. You have to sacrifice. Depends on how bad you want it. Maybe instead of going out with the boys on Saturday night and grabbing a drink at the pub or going to watch the football game or whatever, you take that time, okay, and you work on your content. It doesn't sound sexy, right? It doesn't sound romanticized, but that's the truth. You have to sacrifice some of the other things that you love on your time out, time off um, for this endeavor. And it is a long-term thing. I'm not saying you can't make money in the short term. You can, but you have to think of this as long-term. 
if you create from the core of the core, you have a true purpose, a true cause. Okay. Um, I would advise you to check out this. Um, I would advise you to check this out from the very, very beginning. I would say, check it out from the very, very beginning uh, and replay, watch this replay, listen to this replay. You'll get really, I talked a lot about this, but again, coming from that epicenter of who you are, what is it that really electrifies you and brings you the most alive? You, that's something you should try to create content around. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for views. The money will come, but what is most infectious, what actually attracts the number one thing that every content creator needs, which is an audience, what attracts a real authentic audience is you speaking your truth, you speaking from the core of the core with a true cause or true purpose. And sacrifice. Every good thing, every great thing is hard. It takes blood, sweat, and tears. It's a long game. But more importantly, you got to sacrifice some of those other things, right? I sacrificed going out on weekends. I sacrificed just watching TV and being lazy on the couch. I sacrificed a lot of things. And it was worth every bleeding second. It's been worth it. I hope that helps. I'm for real. Thank you so much for being here on Insta Live. So awesome to have you. Okay, we got one more question from a man, AL. AL says, what editing software do you use? I still use iMovie. I use uh, uh, um, Final Cut Pro too. But I, I mean, I have so many channels and brands that, you know, sometimes I just need something fast. I'll, I'll, I'll use iMovie on my, on my laptop. So you don't need anything fancy. Hey, thank you. I'm for real. Really great to see you, man. I hope to see you again. Become an insider, man. That way you never miss out when we go live. And this is what we talk about every single week, how to monetize in the creator economy. ProfessorNez.com forward slash insider. ProfessorNez.com forward slash insider. It's our free VIP newsletter. Free. It's absolutely free. Everybody should be an insider. So AL, yeah, um, I tried Premiere Pro. Nope. Just hated it. I, it was the least um, user-friendly for me or the least intuitive for me. But man, uh, Final Cut Pro, I'm a Mac dude. Final Cut Pro, iMovie. I love. I still use iMovie. iMovie is totally perfect for what I do. I'm not doing like, you know, Casey Neistat cinematic stuff. I'm mostly just doing, um, you know, real simple talking head stuff. So yeah, Premiere Pro, no, no, no. It's a bad, bad boogie. So I'm going to say goodbye to Instagram. Thank you so much for watching Instagram. You guys rock. Um, let's see. I can share this too. That's kind of cool. Where can I share this? <gasps> You're kidding me. I can share this as a post. That's pretty cool. I love it. Um, I'm also, oh, wait a minute. We got another question from Brian. Look at you guys are all asking questions at the last second. Where you been 20 minutes ago, Brian? <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to answer this. This is going to be the last question. Then I got to go. Brian says, what video would you recommend somebody to watch on editing for the first time? Um, I don't know, but I guarantee you um, some of our awesome Nez Nation audience would know, and they'll probably leave something in the comments. But if you just search on YouTube, search, you know, editing for beginners, there's probably a ton of good videos that you can find. Um. I don't think you'll have any problem with that. But here's another thing I would say, Brian, which is maybe even better than that, is just try to, iMovie is really easy. Start simple. It's really, really not that hard or or whatever, um, whatever PC's version of iMovie is. I don't know what PC's version of that is. But just, you know, start off simple. Don't overcomplicate things. And as you learn, as you go, as you put in the time, as you put in the effort, um, you will get better and better. And then you can maybe up your game and go to a more advanced editing software. DaVinci Resolve, I think, is free now too. Um, but yeah, try it out. Just start simple and just search. You know, I would say just search on YouTube, editing for beginners. You'll probably find a ton of great videos that can help you on how to do that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to really say, I love you guys so much. And if you have any other questions, leave it in the comments, replay viewers, leave it in the comments, podcast listeners. There's a questionnaire form. Leave that in the show notes. Um, I just want to say a couple more things really quickly before we go. Number one in the pin comment and in the show notes is that free PDF, 28 credible and realistic ways for you to make money 
online. Go check that out. It's absolutely free. It's my gift from me to you. Also, um, don't forget to become an insider because that is your sure proof, foolproof way of never missing out on another video, live stream, contest, prize, giveaway, everything you need to know. It's your one-stop shop. Everything you need to know about how to monetize in the creator economy. I am your host, Professor Nez, on behalf of the entire Nez Nation audience. I love y'all, and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, y'all. Have a wonderful week.